Hello again from the Maniac Guy up here in Maine. Uh, welcome. So, did that other video, uh, what, 20 days ago or so, about the uh, Benchmade 51. And uh, I've, I have been carrying it. I've been using it a lot. And it's held up great. Uh, everything is going absolutely awesome with this knife. I couldn't be happier with it. Go easy on my cameraman and not going to flip a lot today. So... These tend to work loose. They haven't yet for me, uh, and it has been just over 20 days, and I have been using this a whole lot. I'd say every day I've been flipping with it. And uh, they haven't come loose yet, but you know what? I am going to take the advice of others, and I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these suckers down and put some Loctite. So, just to kind of outline what we'll be using, uh, I've taken and, and compounded, you know, just different methods that different people have used and what some of the most common that I see being used and it seems to make a whole lot of sense to me is the first thing that you're going to want is uh, I do a lot of uh, work on my firearms uh, so I have gunsmithing screwdrivers and uh, this particular one is a DAC Industries and I'm using a Wheeler uh, engineering bit. I don't exactly know what size bit this is but it should be a fairly standard Torx bit. You're going to have two different size Torx bit. You're going to have one for your, these are two different sizes uh, here, one for your your pivot pins and the other one for your Zen screws and uh, it'll fit right in there and it'll take this out. I can tell you just from working on fine screws with firearms you certainly want to have two things. You want to have a magnetized screwdriver which this is or you can have uh, a standard Torx screwdriver and stick a magnet to it that will attract the screw so you don't drop the screw and wind up chasing this, this small thing or worst case scenario wind up having to buy some new ones through uh, Flytanium or through the company or, or whatever because you lost a small screw. It's the biggest pain in the butt in the world. I've done it with firearms before so I'm sure there's no shortage of uh, people who flip a lot more than I do who have gone through that as well. So be sure that you have a magnetized screwdriver uh, be sure that you get the proper bit because you do not want to strip these things out for the same reason that I just mentioned. Uh, so the screwdriver is going to be important. We're also going to have to prep the screws because the thread locker that I'm going to talk about in a second, uh, it won't adhere if there's any dust or debris or grease. So I've got just your standard 70% uh, isopropyl rubbing alcohol. You can buy it at any Walmart or Target. Rite Aid, whatever you've got for pharmacy, Shaw's, whatever your shopping centers are. I'm sure there's different people watching from all over the place, hopefully, that, uh, thank you, by the way, if you're watching. I certainly appreciate it. Uh, anyway, rubbing alcohol is what I'm going to prep the metals with, just to kind of clean the screws off. I have went ahead and prepped and put a little bit of the alcohol right here in this guy so that I'm going to drop the screws in and kind of let them marinate for a minute before I clean them off. The thread locker that I'm using, you don't want to use red, and basically this is Loctite. Uh, this here is Permanex, or Permatex, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, I heard that there's a long sorted pass between Loctite and Permatex, where they used to be one in the same company. I guess Loctite bought out Permatex a long time ago, and then Permatex actually withdrew and started their own company again. So bottom line is don't be thrown off if you go to your local hardware store and you don't see the Loctite brand Loctite. Permatex will be just fine. And you want to use the 242 and Loctite will say 242 blue right on it. And you probably can't see it, but right about here, the part number on this is 24200. So you can actually see that this is the 242. So always look for the 242 blue. Blue is the color. And what it is is it's a semi-permanent. It's uh, not going to require heat. It's not a permanent like the red. Uh, and you obviously don't want to be applying heat to these uh, G10 scales when you're having to remove these at some point again. So the blue Loctite thread locker is what you're going to be looking for. I'll go over applying that to the screws in a bit. Uh, Militech C1. This is the oil that I chose to use. I've got a lot of different oils and, and lubricants for my firearms. And oddly enough, until I started watching uh, the knife forums and, and watching the YouTube videos on the knives, you know, I, I never actually had used or, uh, gosh, I've never even heard of the Militech one before. And uh, apparently it's an American-made uh, gun oil, which 
everybody almost unanimously seems to say. I mean, you can go with the ballast song, uh, like the the Blue Goo from uh, that actually Benchmade, I believe, makes, or you know, several other lubricants. But uh, resoundingly, somebody started using Militech uh, one at some point, and I even saw where. Uh, some of the older sites and the older data that was out there, I believe, that they used to sell this right through the Benchmade website. So Militech 1 is the oil that I'll be using to both lubricate my, my pivot pin areas and and uh, condition the metal. Uh, it's always good to, to take care of your metal if you get anything on it. <laughs> Blood, <laughs> for instance. Uh, so yeah, that's how we're going to clean and condition the metal and lubricate the pivots. So... That's pretty much what we have. Uh, I'm just working down in my normal area where I tie flies and, and work on my guns. So it's a bit dingy in places. So I put a drop cloth down just so I can try to catch some of my mass. It's just an old t-shirt that I'm using. Now remember, you're going to want to be really careful with these small screws because you do not want to wind up chasing them. So we're just going to drop that right in the alcohol just to start stripping all the grease the various types off from that. Now we're just going to take off this other Zen pin screw on this side. Just occurred to me that perhaps these screws are made of aluminum or titanium. Not sure, but the magnet does not seem to be sticking to them. As I said, this is uh, this is a first time for me. So you guys are watching a fella that uh, has gleaned information from others and is learning as we go. So with that being said, I am going to try out a couple of my torque spits to see which one I'm going to want for my pivot pins. And I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and start preparation on those. So we'll see you guys again in a few minutes. And we're back. So pretty much what we've done is we've done the four Zen pin screws and we've done this pivot screw here save you guys the agony of all that so I've been marinating the last pivot screw in my alcohol so this is gonna come out I thought I had a spare toothbrush I picked up a pair of tweezers just because it makes it easier I thought I had a spare toothbrush hanging around probably that's the right tool for the job uh, because it really gets in these fine threads uh, really good uh, that's something that I, I use all the time when I'm working on firearms. But, unfortunately, uh, my son actually asked me if there was a tool for getting in between the threads on these fine screws. And I said, yeah, it's called a toothbrush. And he said, no, is there an actual tool? And I said, uh, yeah, it's called a toothbrush. Uh, because the reality is very few things actually get in between the threads on these screws like a toothbrush will. Uh, and you want to get all the debris and, and everything out of these before you introduce the thread locker. So, unfortunately, all of my toothbrushes that are spare in the house are gunked up with gun grease and uh, stuff from tinkering on, tinkering on firearms. So, pardon me while I, I'm rambling a little bit, but that's about as good as we're going to get right now. You can see some residual from the actual company uh, where they had some sort of a product on this now. The next step is we're going to take and get a little bit of our alcohol solution here. And we're going to want to actually sanitize the inside of the pinhole. Because again, we want to make sure this whole area is good to go. Now we're going to dry the hole out. And pretty much what I'm doing is I'm just taking a paper towel, shock cloth actually, getting down in there and almost threading it kind of sort of right in into the end of the barrel down in there because we really want to get inside of those threads and make sure that everything is sanitized, so to say. We get every bit of grease or grime or whatever we've got going on down there out. So now, thread locker. Make sure you shake it. Always make sure you give it a good shake. Because it will separate. A lot of people will say, why, why didn't the thread locker work? I tried it, it doesn't seem to be working. It's probably either because the metal surface wasn't properly cleaned, or because you didn't shake up your thread locker. 
You don't want to have too much on your screw. So and don't be afraid to wipe it all off and start over as well if you have to. Pretty much want to cover cover the first few threads. Because you don't want this stuff puking out all over everything and uh, gumming the whole works up. I want to go easy with it. Kind of reverse thread it until it locks in. A, you feel it drop in a place because you don't really want to strip it. And trial and error here. I tighten it down until it's snug, which at that point, nothing moves. So then you want to bring it back off just maybe a quarter turn so that it swings freely. Just kind of checking them both. Back it off just a little bit more. And that actually feels pretty darn good to me. So now I'm going to wipe off any of the excess. And now that that is done, and we put our cap back on our blue thread locker, our Loctite. Now we are going to get friendly with the Militech. And pretty much what I'm going to do with the oil is I'm going to put a little right on my shop cloth here. And I'm just going to lightly go over the handles and everything where I just applied the thread locker just lightly over the top. I'm going to take, take a rag, dry it off because what we don't want to have happen is this just kind of helps so that any that you got on the surface by accident won't adhere to the surface because you kind of want it to hang out inside on the thread lock or inside on the threads where the lock is supposed to be and you don't want it on the outside where you don't want it to be so it kind of creates this hard slippery spot on the handles so now that we've done that you're not supposed to flip this by the way for 24 hours after the application all of the sources say you don't want to do that we're just going to take and we're going to put drop a Militech on both sides because what we want to have happen is we actually want to have this stuff work its way right down in in the pivots just in case we got out of hand and got any thread lock that kind of overstepped its bounds and wound up in the pivots because we don't really want a ballast on with pivots that have been uh, seized. Kind of defeats the purpose. Take this opportunity to clean the blade a little bit. And we're just gonna clean this up. I would rather do this right right now and have it done righteously so that in the future there's less maintenance on it. So that in a nutshell is at least as I've learned how to properly lubricate, uh, pull these screws, and uh, Loctite them. Now we're going to let it sit for 24 hours, and hopefully uh, we'll be good to go after that for roughly six months. Uh, as I say, I just didn't want to take the chance at losing one of these screws and having to repurchase it, and then you're down while you're trying to look for the replacement screw. And uh, Yeah, uh, I'll check back in with you guys and let you know how all this works in the long run. I don't see why it shouldn't work great, so we're just going to go ahead and let this sit for 24 hours. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on a video in the future, maybe with this, perhaps with some other piece of kit or some other piece of gear that I use or with firearms. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I'd like to do with this channel, so uh, I look forward to sharing with you guys, and hopefully you look forward to watching uh, whatever comes out. So thank you so much for hanging with me, guys, and again... Have a good day from uh, the maniac guy up here in the beautiful state of Maine. All right, take care.